magnifique, époustouflante, et belle. These three words often describe the wonder that is known France. France is a country like no other, with stunning cities, monuments, and so much to do. It's no surprise that it's one of the most visited countries in Europe. Every year, more than 90 million people tour the country to witness its food, wine, politics, art, music, and more. From the romantic allure of Paris, dubbed the City of Love, to the enchanting landscapes that have inspired countless masterpieces. The allure of France's cultural contributions is undeniable. However, beneath this dazzling facade lies a history fraught with the echoes of suffering and exploitation, a legacy rooted in the dark underbelly of colonization and the merciless plundering of Africa. Imagine France like a shiny coin with two sides. One side is all about its culture, like a delicious cake with many layers. France has made amazing things that people enjoy, like tasty food and beautiful paintings. But if we flip the coin, we see a darker side. This side tells a story of Africa being hurt by France. The same nation that birthed revolutionary ideas and artistic brilliance was also a key player in the transatlantic slave trade, reaping immense profits from the forced labor and suffering of countless African souls. As France thrived on the fruits of colonization, it siphoned the lifeblood of entire nations, leaving scars that continue to reverberate through the present day. This video is like a journey. We're going to look at both sides of the coin, the good and the ugly. By learning about France's past, we can understand why it's important to see the whole picture. Just like we need to know all the ingredients in a recipe to make a delicious dish, we need to know all of France's history to understand its true flavor. From the inhumane treatment of millions of Africans in the name of slavery to the colonization and exploitation of Africa and its resources, we are going to uncover the bitter truth about France that the country hopes to bury. Before we get right into the video, please smash the like button and subscribe to the channel to keep informed of our eye-opening black narrative. The French slave trade, the French exploitation of Africa, began with the slave trade. This inhuman event saw African being treated like property to be bought and sold. After Portugal and Great Britain, France was the third most active power involved in the transatlantic slave trade. Between 1551 and 1875, over 1,300,000 African people were transported by force to the New World on ships flying the French flag, according to the Slave Voyages database. With these 4,118 crossings, France was responsible for 11% of the transatlantic slave trade, which in total affected more than 12.5 million men, women, and children from the beginning of the 16th century to the end of the 19th century. Two-thirds of those enslaved were men, and perhaps 27% were children. Approximately 13% perished during the Middle Passage, with their bodies being thrown into the sea. In 1658, on the initiative of Colbert, Louis XIV signed an edict establishing the legal status of slaves in the overseas French colonies. France was thus the first European kingdom to legislate on the status of slaves, producing the Code Noir, or Black Code. A slave's status was that of personal property. The living conditions in the colonies were extremely difficult. The life expectancy of slaves rarely exceeded 20 years on the plantations. For this reason, the colonists regularly bought new captives. In the 17th century, the majority of enslaved Africans were purchased in the Senegambia region, where the French established trading posts at Saint-Louis in Senegal and on the island of Gore, as well as in the Bight of Benin. Wars and slave raids were common in Africa. African kings and chiefs put in place a system of hunters and traffickers. The captives were then exchanged for gunpowder, weapons, brandy, textiles, utensils, glass beads, and tobacco. But as the 17th century continued, the demand for captives grew. As a consequence, the African kingdoms found themselves in a quasi-permanent state of war. Customary practices turned sentences for criminal offenses into captivity, thus multiplying the number of captives. This trade led to veritable fortunes for the Europeans and African kings. By providing firearms amongst the trade goods, Europeans increased warfare and political instability in West Africa. Some states, such as Asante and Dahomey, grew powerful and wealthy as a result. Other states were completely destroyed and their populations decimated as they were absorbed by rivals. 
millions of Africans were forcibly removed from their homes, and towns and villages were depopulated. Many Africans were killed in slaving wars or remained enslaved in Africa. Many states, including Angola under Queen Nzinga and Bande and Congo, strongly resisted slavery. However, the interests of those involved in the trade proved too great to overcome. About two-thirds of the people sold to European traders were men. Fewer women were sold because their skills as farmers and craft workers were crucially important in African societies. The burden of rebuilding their violated communities fell to these women. While Nantes in France is known to be the home to some breathtaking churches and cathedrals, it once represented a dark chapter in the lives of Africans. Throughout the 18th century, Nantes maintained its rank as foremost port for the French slave trade, totaling 43% of the country's slaving expeditions. Slaves would be transported to Saint-Dominique, now Haiti, where they were put to work under the cruelest conditions. The death rate of slaves on the plantations required the enslaved workforce to be regularly replaced. The most sought-after captives were men 20 to 25 years, strong and in good health, to work on the sugar plantations. This was the most difficult work, which had a very high death rate for slaves and a short life expectancy. Adolescent slaves would be trained for roles vital to the functioning of the plantations, such as blacksmiths, wheelwrights, and locksmiths, and women would be trained for small repairs or domestic chores. Once they were accustomed to plantation life, some would become workshop slaves and be put in charge of the functioning of parts of the plantation infrastructure, such as the mill, the boiling house, and the curing house. Rest days were rare and could be canceled. Life in the colonies was particularly difficult for women. Masters would sometimes have non-consensual intercourse with their slaves. These defilements and forced concubinages resulted in children who were referred to at the time by the word mulatto, and whose status was set down in the Cote Noir and depended on that of the mother. Anyone who tried to run away from the plantations was pursued by slave hunters, who were charged with either bringing them back to the plantation so they could be punished by mutilation or with killing them. These escapes were known as marunage. The life of a slave in the Antilles was one of work, punishment, malnutrition, and sickness. It would go on for many centuries, depopulating the continent, stifling it economic growth, and leading to conflicts between various groups that still exist today. Colonization and Exploitation of Africa while the abolition of slavery in the 19th century might have seemed like a step towards progress, it did not signify an end to France's exploitation of African lands and resources. Instead, it marked the beginning of a new chapter in which France sought to exert control over Africa's vast wealth for its own benefit. Following the abolition of slavery, France's thirst for Africa's resources remained unquenched. With a focus on economic domination, France turned to colonization as a means to secure its interests. The scramble for Africa in the late 19th and early 20th centuries saw European powers, including France, carve up the African continent without regard for its diverse cultures, histories, or existing borders. This led to the colonization of numerous African countries, each accompanied by a catalog of atrocities, Algeria. While visiting Algiers during his 2017 election campaign, French President Emmanuel Macron did admit that the French colonization of Algeria was a crime against humanity. The colonial period in Algeria was a time of suffering and struggle for Algerians who fought to win back their freedom and defend their values against French attempts to subjugate them. It was also a struggle to end foreign control over the country's wealth and resources. On the pretext of a slight to their consul, the French invaded Algeria in 1830. Directed by Marshal Bougaud, who became the first governor general of Algeria, the conquest was violent and marked by a scorched earth policy designed to reduce the power of the native rulers, the day, including massacres, mass defilement, and other atrocities. Between 500,000 and 1 million from approximately 3 million Algerians were killed in the first three decades of the conquest. In 1834, Algeria became a French military colony. It was declared by the Constitution of 1848 to be an integral part of France and was divided into three departments, Alger, Oran, and Constantine. Many French and other Europeans, like Spanish, Italians, Maltese, and others, later settled in Algeria. 
Under French rule, Algeria faced a systematic campaign of oppression and exploitation. The Algerian people were subjected to forced labor, land confiscation, and heavy taxation. The French colonial administration aimed to exploit Algeria's vast resources, particularly its fertile lands and valuable minerals, to benefit the French economy. These exploitative practices led to widespread poverty and deprivation among the Algerian population. Records suggest that French soldiers engaged in genocide through people from helicopters. The skulls of the decapitated Algerian leaders demanding freedom were exhibited at the Human Museum of Paris in 1880. To this day, Algeria is still waiting for repatriation of the skulls to return, some of whom have been identified. The socio-economic consequences of colonization were profound. Algerian farmers were pushed off their lands, as vast tracts of fertile territory were seized for European settlers, known as colons. The traditional Algerian way of life was disrupted, and the Algerian people faced discrimination and segregation in their own country. French authorities promoted cultural assimilation, suppressing Algerian language and culture in favor of French norms. French occupation of Algeria would be marked by a long list of massacres, even to unarmed civilians. This was a series of attacks by French colonial authorities and Pied Noir settler militias on Algerian civilians in 1945 around the market town of Sétif, west of Constantine, in French Algeria. In response to French police firing on demonstrators at a protest, on May 8, 1945, Riots in the town were followed by attacks on French settlers in the surrounding countryside, resulting in 102 deaths. The French colonial authorities and European settlers retaliated by killing between 6,000 and 30,000 Muslims in the region. Both the outbreak and the indiscriminate nature of its retaliation marked a turning point in Franco-Algerian relations, leading to the Algerian War of 1954 to 1962. Founded in 1954, the Algerian National Liberation Front, or Front de Libération Nationale, FLN created an armed wing, the Armée de Libération Nationale, or National Liberation Army, to engage in an armed struggle against French authority. Many Algerian soldiers served for the French army in the First Indochina War, had strong sympathy for the Vietnamese fighting against France, and took up their experience to support the ALN. The Algerian War of Independence, spanning from 1954 to 1962, stands as a testament to both the Algerian people's determination for self-determination and France's willingness to use extreme measures to maintain control. In response to the growing insurgency, France resorted to brutal tactics to suppress the FLN and maintain its grip on Algeria. The use of torture and arbitrary detention by French security forces became notorious during this period. The war brought about so much death and sorrow it caused the deaths of between 300,000 and 1,500,000 Algerians. During the war, massacres of civilians, defilement, and torture was a common tactic used by the French. The French destroyed over 8,000 villages and relocated over 2 million Algerians to concentration camps, with some being forced into labor. A notable instance of defilement was that of Jamila Bupasha, a 23-years-old Algerian woman who was arrested in 1960 accused of attempting to bomb a cafe in Algiers. Her confession was obtained through torture and defilement. Her subsequent trial affected French public opinion about the French army's methods in Algeria after publicity of the case by Simone de Beauvoir and Giselle Halimi. In response to the war, French police would conduct a mass cleansing of Paris in what is known as the Paris Massacre of 1961. Under orders from the head of the Parisian police, Maurice Papon, the National Police attacked a demonstration by 30,000 pro-National Liberation Front Algerians. After 37 years of denial and censorship of the press, in 1998, the government finally acknowledged 40 deaths, while some historians estimate that between 200 and 300 Algerians died. These deaths was due to heavy-handed beating by the police, as well as mass drowning, as police officers who threw demonstrators into the River Seine. The war's impact extended beyond the battlefield, leaving scars on both Algerian society and French public opinion. International condemnation of French actions further intensified as reports of torture and human rights abuses surfaced. The Algerian War of Independence concluded with the signing of the Evian Accords in 1962, 
leading to Algeria's formal independence. However, the legacy of colonization and the war's brutality continue to shape Algeria's socio-political landscape to this day. The scars left by the conflict run deep, underscoring the lengths to which France was willing to go to maintain its control over its African territories, leaving a painful legacy of suffering, trauma, and a fractured national identity. Senegal. The history of France's colonial legacy in Senegal is marred by a series of atrocities that reveal the deep-seated oppression and disregard for the lives of the Senegalese people. The Theoroy Massacre of 1944 serves as a poignant example of the brutal mistreatment and exploitation that black African soldiers faced, even after fighting for France during World War II. This dark episode underscores France's callous approach to its colonial subjects and its willingness to prioritize its own interests over the lives of those who served its cause. During World War II, Senegalese riflemen played a crucial role in supporting France's war effort. These brave soldiers fought on behalf of a country they believed would honor their sacrifices and contributions. However, the reality they faced was a painful betrayal. The demands for allowances and pensions were not unjustified. They were owed compensation for their service and sacrifices. The fact that these demands led to their brutal suppression and death demonstrates France's indifference to the well-being and rights of its colonial subjects. The Tiaroy massacre vividly illustrates this indifference. On the evening of November 30, 1944, French soldiers turned their weapons on the very men who had fought alongside them. The victims were Senegalese riflemen, and the perpetrators were their own commanding officers. The soldiers were ruthlessly killed for daring to ask for what was rightfully theirs. The numbers of casualties remain disputed, with estimates ranging from the French government's official acknowledgement of 35 deaths to war, veterans' claims of up to 300 lives lost. The aftermath of the massacre further reveals France's disregard for the lives of those who had fought in its service. Families of the victims were denied closure as their loved ones' bodies were not properly buried, and the location of their burial sites remains unknown to this day. The lack of recognition and respect for their sacrifices compounds the pain of those who lost their family members. The French government's attempts to conceal the truth and distort the narrative are particularly reprehensible. The issuance of a circular claiming that the riflemen had received their remunerations, despite evidence to the contrary, reflects a concerted effort to downplay its own culpability. The Senegalese people's experiences under French colonial rule paint a picture of a system built on exploitation, dehumanization, and systematic oppression. Senegal, rich in resources and culture, was subject to the ruthless grasp of a colonial power that valued its own interests above the lives and dignity of its subjects. Togo. The history of Togo is a haunting narrative of exploitation, oppression, and atrocities perpetrated by colonial powers, most notably France. Situated in West Africa, Togo was not only a pivotal hub in the transatlantic slave trade, where the harrowing journey of no return began for countless enslaved Africans, but it also bore witness to a series of heinous acts that sought to assert dominance, extract resources, and quell any attempts at liberation. Togo's tumultuous past underlines the depth of colonial greed and the ruthlessness of imperial powers. As the heart of the transatlantic slave trade, Togo's soil was soaked in the blood and tears of those who suffered unimaginable horrors. Enslaved Africans were torn from their homes, families, and communities, subjected to dehumanizing conditions, and transported across the seas in chains. The scars of this brutal history remain etched in Togo's collective memory, a painful reminder of the inhumanity that once prevailed. The German colonial era in Togo was marked by further exploitation and subjugation. The invasion of Togo land by French and British forces in 1914 turned things around. The colonial ambitions of these powers were not driven by altruism, but rather by a hunger for resources and dominance. The German forces surrendered, paving the way for the division of Togoland into French and British administrative zones in 1916. This division was a clear display of colonial power's disregard for the aspirations and sovereignty of the Togolese people. However, the atrocities did not end with the colonial reshuffling. The Piahoto Massacre of June 21, 
1957, stands as a grim testament to France's ongoing oppression in Togo. A UN delegation, led by Charles T. O. King, arrived in Togo, providing an opportunity for the Togolese population to express their discontent with the French colonial administration. The people's frustration had reached a boiling point, fueled by years of subjugation and exploitation. The arrest of Togolese nationalist Buyo Mukpe served as the spark that ignited the people's anger. In response to the demonstrators' outcry, the colonial army, acting as an instrument of French authority, responded with brutal force. The Hoda Market, a place of commerce and community, became a scene of tragedy as the army opened fire on the crowd. The consequences were dire. Twenty lives were lost, and countless others were left injured and traumatized. The UN mission's tepid response highlighted the complex web of international politics and the seemingly insurmountable challenge of challenging entrenched colonial powers. The Piahoto massacre showed the violent measures that France was willing to take to maintain its grip on Togo. The massacre was not an isolated incident but rather a reflection of a broader pattern of oppression, resource exploitation, and stifling of uprisings. France's stranglehold on Togo's resources was a strategic endeavor aimed at enriching the colonial power at the expense of the indigenous population. This exploitation manifested in the extraction of valuable resources, including minerals, timber, and agricultural products, which were shipped back to France to fuel its economic growth. The suffering endured by the Togolese people was not confined to economic exploitation alone. The yoke of colonialism brought with it cultural erasure, social disintegration, and political suppression. Traditional practices and knowledge were devalued and suppressed in favor of European norms and ideals. The imposition of foreign systems disrupted existing social structures, leading to divisions within communities and the erasure of indigenous identities. Any attempts at resistance or liberation were met with fierce resistance from the colonial authorities. Uprisings, no matter how just the cause, were quelled with an iron fist. France's strategy was clear. Maintain control, safeguard economic interests, and suppress any dissent that threatened its dominance. This brutal suppression perpetuated a cycle of fear and compliance, making it exceedingly difficult for the Togolese people to rise against their oppressors. Even after achieving formal independence in 1960, Togo's struggles were far from over. Neo-colonial influences continued to shape the nation's trajectory, with France exerting a significant degree of control through economic, political, and military ties. This shadow of dominance hindered Togo's ability to forge an independent and self-sufficient path. Cameroon. History is often marred by tales of colonial oppression and the unrelenting pursuit of power and resources. Cameroon, a former French colony, stands as a somber example to the devastating consequences of such ambitions. The pages of Cameroon's past are stained with the blood of its people, and the scars left by France's atrocities continue to haunt the nation to this day. The Union des Populations du Cameroon UPC, a pro-independence party that resonated with the aspirations of the Cameroonian people, found itself facing the unbridled fury of the French administration during the tumultuous struggle for independence. The very notion of freedom was met with brute force, as the French government spared no effort to quell any semblance of dissent. The tragic episode of the Bamaleks genocide is a dark stain on Cameroon's history, a reminder of the horrors inflicted upon the innocent. Historians Thomas Deltum, Manuel Domerga, and Jacob Tatsitsa documented the chilling narrative of these atrocities in their seminal work, Cameroon, a hidden war at the origins of French Africa, 1948 to 1971. The scope of the horrors is unimaginable. French soldiers, acting under the orders of their superiors, engaged in a ruthless campaign of extermination that claimed the lives of an estimated 400,000 Cameroonians of the Bamalek ethnic group. This calculated violence was not an act of happenstance. It was a deliberate strategy to crush any support for the UPC, leaving a traumatized populace in its wake. Max Bardet, a former soldier who served in Cameroon from 1962 to 1964, unveiled a disturbing truth. The military apparatus specifically targeted the Bamaleke people, who were perceived as the backbone of the UPC's support. 
As chilling testimonies of survivors emerge, the sinister orchestration of France's approach becomes increasingly apparent. Villages were bombed, and hundreds of thousands of innocent villagers were herded into assembly areas surrounded by barbed wire. The very essence of humanity was stripped away as systematic torture became the norm, leaving scars that extended far beyond the physical realm. The extent of France's discretion in these horrific acts is encapsulated in Max Bardet's testimony. He recounted an unsettling encounter with an officer who was determined to erase any witnesses from the narrative, ensuring that France's involvement remained concealed. The pursuit of power and influence had driven the nation to such depths that even acknowledging the atrocities committed on foreign soil was a risk too great to take. Roland Pre and Pierre Mesmer, individuals entrusted with the responsibility of heading the French colonial administration in Cameroon, stand as harbingers of the oppressive policies that characterized France's colonial rule. Their hands were stained with the blood of innocents as they orchestrated a policy of violence that left families shattered and communities in ruins. The echoes of their malevolent decisions reverberate through the generations, a chilling reminder of the disregard for human life in the name of dominion. Yet the English-speaking regions of Cameroon did not escape the clutches of French oppression. Blaming the British for harboring nationalists and fomenting unrest, France embarked on a campaign of incursions into British Cameroon. The pretext of rooting out dissent provided a convenient justification for these illegal actions, leading to targeted assassinations and further bloodshed. In an act of complicity, the British authorities succumbed to French pressure, expelling key leaders who sought refuge within their borders, thereby contributing to the dismantling of Cameroon's fight for independence. France's colonial legacy in Cameroon is one of pain, exploitation, and resource extraction. The richness of Cameroon's natural resources became a source of both wealth and suffering, as the French government ruthlessly exploited the nation's assets for its own gain. The cycle of oppression perpetuated by France stifled any attempt at uprising, leaving the Cameroonian people trapped in a relentless struggle for survival and autonomy. The scars inflicted during those dark times are not easily erased, as they continue to cast a long shadow over the nation's present reality. Going through this video, it becomes clear that we've only begun to uncover the extensive list of France's actions in Africa that can be labeled as atrocities. Part 1 of our exploration has revealed disturbing instances, yet it's evident that the surface has barely been scratched. As we move into the next part, a more intricate picture emerges. Not only were multiple countries subject to exploitation, but we also witness the persistent grip that France maintains over its former colonies. This happens even after these nations have gained independence from their colonial oppressors. This control enables them to lay claim to the country's valuable resources and siphon off their wealth. The journey ahead promises to expose further layers of these unsettling realities, highlighting the ongoing impact of colonial history on the African nations and their struggle for autonomy and equitable development. This brings us to the end of this video. Tell us what you think in the comment section, as we are always interested in your thoughts. As always, don't forget to like the video, subscribe to our channel, and share our videos to let more people know the truth about blacks and to hear their own part of the narratives. Thanks for watching.